Hello and welcome back to Metal Machine Shop. This video is about my homemade dividing or indexing head because a few people who watched my gear making video have asked me about it. So this is a short run through of what it is and how it works. So this is the dividing head resting on the milling machine table. The purpose of the dividing head is to make things like gears where the workpiece has a number of equally spaced features. To make these you need to be able to incrementally rotate the work to machine the gear teeth or holes or whatever the work requires. The dividing head is mostly constructed of steel. The thick steel base is bolted to two steel uprights. The steel spindle was made on the lathe and has the same spindle nose as my Myford lathe because this allows me to use my lathe tooling on the dividing head things such as chucks, collets and taper tooling. As for the lathe, the spindle has a number two Morse taper and is bored through to allow a drawbar to be fitted when using taper tooling. The two uprights are fitted with a plain bearing made of cast iron. The front bearing is split and there is a clamp that allows the spindle to be locked during the cutting operations. The rear end of the spindle is where the gears are fitted. There is a key to stop the gears from rotating on the spindle. The dividing head can either be used with a single gear or a compound gear train. A single gear is used when the number of divisions on the work is equal to the number of divisions on the gear that you have available, or where the gear is a multiple of the number of divisions required. The compound gear train is used where a suitable single gear is not available, but where the number of divisions required can be achieved by setting up a compound gear train. The dividing head was designed to use the change gears that came with my Warco lathe. And these are the gears that I have available for the dividing operations. This device is the plunger. It is spring-loaded and the brass nose engages between the gear teeth. Basically, the way the dividing head works is by engaging the plunger between the gear teeth, locking the spindle, performing the machining operation, unlocking the spindle, and rotating the spindle to engage the plunger in the next space, and so on. This part here is made of aluminium. I call it the banjo, and it allows the plunger and the gear train to be set up by sliding them to the right position along the slots. The banjo is bolted to a protruding boss on the rear plane bearing and can be rotated around the spindle to any convenient position. This is the underneath of the device. I've machined it flat as can be seen by the marks from the milling cutter. The base is fitted to the uprights with four countersunk screws. The slots in the base are for bolting the device down to the mill table. They are spaced so that I can align the dividing head with the spindle either parallel or perpendicular to the x-axis, just in case there's a reason to work in that position, which is quite unusual but can happen. This is how the dividing head is set up on the mill table. With the bolts loosely fitted, an engineer's square is used to align the spindle parallel to the x-axis by positioning the rear edge of the base against the square tightening the nuts finger tight and then fully tightening them with a spanner. The side and front edges of the base are machined precisely parallel or square to the spindle axis respectively. This allows the dividing head to be aligned properly with the machine axes. This guarantees that the spindle is either normal to or parallel to the x-axis of the milling machine table as required. Moving over to the lathe, the dividing head is also designed to be bolted to the lathe cross slide. It can either be set up parallel or perpendicular to the lathe spindle axis, or indeed at any angle in between by using suitable clamps to hold it down. The bolt holes in the base are spaced to align with the T-slots on the cross slide. The dividing head was actually made using the lathe and the bearing bores were bored through with a boring bar fitted between the lathe centres. This ensured that the spindle on the dividing head was at precisely the same height as the lathe spindle, which is important for most machining operations using the lathe. 
As on the milling machine, the dividing head is set up square to the lathe using an engineer's square braced against the front edge of the cross slide and pressing the edges of the base against it. It's a big advantage to be able to use the dividing head in the lathe because although the dividing head can be set up vertically in the milling machine, the height of the milling machine head is limited, which greatly constrains the size of work possible. This is much less of a problem on the lathe because the carriage can be moved a long way over to the right and the setup can also be more rigid. The cutting tool is fitted to the lathe spindle, typically a drill chuck or a collet chuck for a milling cutter. This allows things like holes or slots to be machined, either parallel or square to the works axis. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll finish up with a film show showing the dividing head being made and the completed product. See you next time.